All right, guys, welcome back to round two of UFC Panini Prism Blaster Box openings. I did a video a week ago opening two of these boxes. I got some pretty decent pulls in there, some very nice cards. Uh, I got a few Izzy's, I got a Connor, I got a Khabib. Um, I got a lot of good rookie cards. And, uh, you know, I was pretty happy with that pull. So um, I went ahead and I bought two more boxes. I also have a full 24-pack retail box on the way that I will be doing a video for soon. But uh, I decided in the meantime to go ahead and buy two more boxes to just see if we can get anything uh, better than the last pool. So I'm going to go ahead and get right into these boxes. I'm super excited about this. These are always fun and exciting. You just don't know what you're going to get. So we'll go ahead and open the first box here. All right. All right, box one. Here we go. Let's go ahead and take these out. All right. There we go. So into box one. And we have six packs. Four cards in each, and uh, we will start off with pack number one. Let's see what we get here. I'm hoping for something big. I was pretty happy with the first set of boxes, but I'm really hoping for a rarity in this one. So let's see. And to start off pack one, we have a rookie card, Song Kanan. A fantastic base card here. Uh, Song Kanan, nasty power in his hands. The, you know, good prospect in the welterweight division. Uh, doing doing some good things there. But uh, yeah, that is, a, that is a great base card for Song. So we'll go ahead and put him off to the side here. Oh, and I'm already seeing it. Right behind Song, we have a Fireworks Masvidal. Hell yes. I absolutely love me some Masvidal. He's one of my favorite guys. You know, Street Jesus. Masvidal keeps it real. You know, he's confident. He's cocky. But, you know, it's all in good nature. You know, Masvidal's a good dude. He comes from the, you know, he, he is a street fighter. But, uh, you know, Masvidal having a hard time in the, uh, the Usman fight with that insane KO punch. One of the craziest endings that you could ever imagine. Nobody on earth would have imagined that Usman would have knocked Masvidal out with one punch. Nobody would have predicted that. You know, a lot of people would have predicted, my, myself included, that Usman would beat him with wrestling, grappling, you know, his bread and butter. But for Usman to land that perfectly placed right hand and put Masvidal out cold was literally one of the craziest moments in UFC history. But I'm super happy with that card. A fireworks Masvidal. And behind him... We have a baseline, Darren Till. Not bad on that one. Darren Till, you know, always exciting. Fun in the stand-up department. Uh, you know, Till's had some hard losses. Speaking of hard losses with Till, uh, to Masvidal, who we just pulled, you know, that insane KO uh, back a few years ago. But, uh, you know, uh, I see Darren Till, you know, Darren Till's going to be around for a while. You know, he's he's had some ups and downs, but Till's always a solid fighter. So, uh, you know, great card to have for Till. And behind him, we have the new and up-and-coming Macy Chasson. And that is her rookie card. And that's actually a pretty good rookie card to have. You know, Macy's, uh, Macy's on a little bit of a streak right now. And, uh, you know, she, she could be an up-and-coming problem. So that, that's a pretty solid rookie card to have for her at the moment. And, uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So, perfect. We'll go ahead and put those off to the side. Great pull on that first pack. And now we'll go to pack number two. All right, and on to pack number two. We have the always exciting and excellent striking specialist, Neil Magny. And uh, I love Neil Magny. You know, he's, he's one of my favorite guys. Neil's always a good time to watch. You know, he's, he's got solid stand-up. 
excellent striking. He moves very well. He's very tall, very long. He's always a problem in the division, you know, and he's, he's, he's a, he is a tough guy, you know, he's, he is a tough fight for anybody. And, uh, I love me some Neil, super nice guy, super humble, you know, and he's just a great fighter overall. Very happy with that. And I already see a silver in this. And here we go. The silver's coming up. I see it in the background here. But uh, behind him, we have the recently retired Jimmy Flick. That is his rookie card. Jimmy was doing some uh, some pretty uh, impressive things in the few UFC fights that he had, but he uh, unexpectedly decided to retire. Uh, I believe it was somewhere near the beginning of the year. It might have been the end of last year. But a uh, good rookie card to have for Jimmy there. And behind that... We have a green Khabib. Oh my god. And I got a baseline Khabib in the first pack, in the first video. And now I have the green Khabib. That is phenomenal. Fantastic card for Khabib. Super happy with that. A green prism Khabib. Anything Khabib, you know, especially now that he's retired, you know, that, that is a solid card. Very happy with that. And behind him... We have the always fun and exciting JoJo, Joanne Calderwood. You know, Joanne's, uh, you know, tough, gritty, fun time to watch. You know, she's had some ups and downs, but, uh, you know, Joanne's always solid. Very happy with that card. And now we will go on to the third pack. Let's see here. Alrighty, oh, and I am already grinning from ear to ear, oh god, I'm so happy about this, and even though it is a base card, I got my all-time favorite female fighter, and in my personal opinion, the most dominant female fighter of all time, I think she's better than Amanda, she beat Amanda in that second fight, but the judges were asleep, nobody is better than Valentina, but we have a baseline Valentina Shevchenko, and I am super excited about that. I love Valentina. I mean, everything about her is just awesome. She's so well-rounded. She's so deadly in the stand-up department. Such a solid base, so strong. Her grappling is phenomenal. She's just absolutely dominant in every aspect of MMA. And Valentina is going to be champ for a very long time. Uh, nobody has taken that belt off her anytime soon. I pulled her sister uh, in the last pack, Antonina. And, uh, you know, Antonina's up and down, nowhere near her sister, but Antonina... You know, she's got some potential, but I'm very happy to pull a baseline Valentina. That is fantastic. And behind her, oh my god, I'm already loving this pack. Way more than the first set of boxes. But we have a Junior Dos Santos knockout artist. Now, Junior Dos Santos, JDS, is one of my all-time favorite fighters. Uh, I've been watching him since he debuted in 2008. I mean, I've been a hardcore UFC fan for 17 years, but I started watching him when he debuted in 2008 when he knocked out Fabricio over Doom with that nasty uppercut. JDS is one of the most humble, just fantastic human beings on earth. Such a nice guy, but he is an absolute killer. Uh, you know, back in the day, in his prime, he was steamrolling everybody, knocked out Verdum, knocked out Kane, knocked out Stefan Struve, knocked out Mark Hunt, knocked out Frank Muir. But, uh, you know, unfortunately, in the last few years, age has caught up with Junior. And, uh, you know, he had a lot of tough losses. And, uh, you know, he wound up hitting a losing streak. And then the UFC let him go. But he is one of my all-time favorite fighters. I think he's, you know, he's a legend. And uh, hopefully we'll see him in the Hall of Fame one day. I'm super happy with that. I wanted a JDS card, so that is fantastic. Ooh, and behind Francis, we have a baseline... And I'm sorry, behind Dos Santos, we have a baseline, Francis Ngannou. And in my last pack, I opened up a green Ngannou. I believe it was a, um, I think it was a knockout artist or instant impact Ngannou. But I'm happy about that. I'm, I'm happy to have a solid baseline Francis. And behind Francis, we have a Mackenzie Dern. The always exciting and top level jiu-jitsu fighter, Mackenzie Dern submitting people left and right. Some of the nastiest BJJ in the female division. She has a severe problem in the strawweight division. You know, a lot of girls are not going to be able to handle 
her pace, her grappling, her ground game, and she's just taking limbs whenever she can. Necks, limbs, legs, arms, everything she can get. Uh, McGenzie is always exciting and fun to watch, and uh, I think she's going to continue her streak and only get better. And we will move on to the next pack. Already an excellent pull in these two boxes. And let's see here. All right. And in our next pack, we have the legend and slightly insane Diego Sanchez. You know, Diego, you know, he's a veteran. He's been around so long. You know, he's he's one of the pioneers of boosting the UFC into superstardom to worldwide global recognition. He was part of the original cast of The Ultimate Fighter. Season one, I watched that season live. Um, I loved Diego on that show. You know, I thought he had a lot of potential. And, um, you know, I, I definitely picked him to, to win the show or at least make it to the finals. Unfortunately, you know, Diego in the last few years, I think his, his mental health is, is really deteriorated on him. And he got that, the weird coach, uh, Fabian, whatever his last name was. And, uh, that guy was not good for him. That guy did a lot of embarrassing things that, you know, reflected badly on Diego and them together. But luckily he moved away from that guy. Uh, he's not with that guy anymore, but Diego is still having some, some odd mental health problems and, uh, hopefully nothing serious comes out of it. And, uh, you know, I think Diego needs to retire and just kind of, kind of keep the rest of what he has left of his brain safe. But, uh, you know, Diego's a legend. He's a vet. So we'll put him off to the side and off behind Diego. We have a baseline Carla Esparza, the cookie monster. Uh, you know, one of the, one of the top straw weights lost her belt to Joanna back a few years ago. And, uh, you know, she had some ups and downs, but now Carla's, you know, she's getting back on a little bit of a win streak. And, uh, yeah, solid base for Carla. And behind this, we have a silver. We have our, I think our second silver prism. Let's see what we got. Oh, yes. Yes. I am so excited about that silver prism JDS. Oh, this box is definitely for me. That is fantastic. Again, I said, you know, Junior's one of my all-time favorite fighters. Not only did I get his base card, but now I got a Silver Prism Junior Dos Santos. I am phenomenally happy about that. That is a fantastic card. I love me some Junior, and man, I am I'm so happy about this pack already. And behind Junior, we've got a baseline T-Wood, Tyrone Woodley. And, uh, you know, unfortunately for Woodley... He's had a tough time, you know, in his last few fights, uh, you know, he hit a pretty hard losing skid. Everybody just kind of steamrolled him. Uh, you know, he's up there in age. Tyron Woodley's 40 now. The UFC let him go. And now he's going to fight Jake Paul. And realistically, Woodley should murder that kid. And if that fight is not set up, which it very well could be, Woodley has double the experience in fighting. Woodley is double in age. Woodley still has nasty power in his hands. He's still a fantastic striker, and he should realistically steamroll Jake Paul. But let's really hope that he does the MMA community a solid and embarrasses that stupid-ass kid, because it just... Imagine if Jake Paul winds up knocking Woodley out, how bad that's going to make him look. And it's really going to make <laughs> MMA fans just... Uh, I think we all might shed a tear on that one, because uh, that's just not going to be good. But hopefully Woodley steamrolls Jake Paul and puts an end to that nonsense. Oh, fantastic on that. So we will move on to the next pack. We got two more packs to go. Let's see here. And we are starting off the second to last pack with Bruce Leroy, Alex Caceres. Alex Caceres is always a fun time, you know, came off the Ultimate Fighter, I really liked him, I'm a huge Bruce Lee fan, and him wearing the yellow suit and his fighting style, you know, Alex Caceres is, uh, he's not the best in the cage, you know, he has some ups and downs, but he's been around a while now, he's got a lot of fight experience, you know, and I think he's starting to kind of hit that, that stride where he's going to start to pick up some solid wins, you know, he's had some losses here and there, more wins than losses, but, uh, you know, Bruce Leroy, Alex Caceres, you know, he's always a good time, he's fun, and who doesn't love the uh, the big fro, you know, it's it's fantastic, so we will put him off to the side, and ooh boy, I'm seeing a green behind him, 
And who do we have? Oh, a green fireworks Francis Ngannou. Oh, I am getting a whole lot of Francis in these packs. And that is phenomenal. I believe my last green of him was a uh, knockout artist. And now I can go ahead and add the green and spiraled out vortex in the background. That is the green Francis Ngannou. Very happy with that. That is phenomenal. Fantastic. And behind him, and I exposed the last card already, but that's okay. Behind him, we have the legend Damian Maya. You know, Maya's been in the UFC for a very long time. He's absolutely a UFC veteran. One of the best Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu fighters on the planet. Maya, you know, he, he is a legend. And, uh, you know, recently he had the loss to Bilal Muhammad. Uh, he was trying to stick around to have one more fight and possibly fight Nate, which would have been a very interesting matchup. But uh, I don't know what's going to happen with Maya. Um, he did say he was most likely going to retire. He he most likely will. But there is a chance that we possibly see him have one more fight in the UFC. But, uh, you know, if Maya retires right now, I would have no problem with that. If he just kind of rides off into the sunset. You know, Maya had a great career. He made it to a title shot against Anderson back in 2009. Unfortunately, he didn't win the belt. But, uh, you know, Maya is a legend. And one of the best BJJ practitioners on earth. So... Fantastic. And behind him, we have T-City, Brian Ortega, who is going to be fighting Alexander Volkanovsky in September and finally getting another shot at that featherweight title. You know, we had the absolute crazy beatdown by Max, all that volume, breaking records on Ortega's face with the amount of significant strikes landed. I felt, you know, pretty bad for Ortega in that fight. He took a lot of damage, a lot of shots. But, uh, you know, he recovered well. And I think Brian has a very good chance of beating Alexander Volkanovsky. And I, I actually predict that he will. Um, you know, the, the performance that he was uh, able to put on against uh, Chan Sung Jung, the Korean zombie, you know, nobody expected him to really dominate Korean zombie like that, and he did. And uh, Ortega has all the well-rounded skills in the world to become a champion. You know, he's got great stand-up, excellent high-level jiu-jitsu, and he very well could beat Alexander Vol Volkanovsky in a few months, so... I'm, uh, I'm hoping he wins that belt. But that's a great pull. Baseline Ortega. And now we are on the final pack of box one. Let's see what we get. I'm already very happy with these packs. <clears throat> All right. And in the last pack, we have the baseline Yan Zonan. I actually got this card in the first pack in the first box. Another rookie card for her. Solid card to have. All right, and again, I got the baseline and Antonino Shevchenko. Antonina, sorry, Shevchenko. Uh, I already got this card as well. And what do we have? Oh, here we go. Bobby Knuckles behind him, a fearless Robert Whitaker. You know, Rob Whitaker is, you know, one of the best strikers, one of the best fighters of all time in the middleweight division. You know, he was the champ for a while. And then Izzy came along with that absolute dominance and uh, knocked him out. And uh, Robert has fought his way back to a second title shot. Unfortunately, I don't think he's getting that belt back. I think Izzy is going to beat him again. But that is my first Robert Whit Whitaker, and uh, I'm very happy to have that. Fantastic. And behind him, we have a Shamil Abdurahmakimov. And, uh, you know, he's uh, he's had a few fights in the UFC, doing some pretty decent things there. Not a bad heavyweight card to have. All right. And that was a phenomenal first box to open. I am super happy with all the cards that I got. I got a lot of juniors. I got a Masvidal. I got another Francis. I got a Valentina. A lot of my favorite fighters, so I'm super excited about that. And now we are going to go to the final box. And I can only imagine. Let's hope that this second box is even better. Let's see here. All right. And here we go. We have box two. Do, do, do. Sorry, I had a little bit of a camera issue there. I had to make sure it wasn't about to shut off on me. All right. Let's get these out. Another six packs. There we go. All right, 
And then to pack one of the second box. Oh, here we go. Off the bat, we have a baseline El Kakui, Tony Ferguson. I pulled his silver prism in my first pack of the first box. And uh, yeah, I love Tony. He's one of my favorite guys. He's had some hard losses recently, but even though Tony's getting up there in age, you know, he still has the potential to win fights. You know, I don't know if he's going to be able to hang with the top of the division anymore. I think there's just a lot of guys that are just, you know, all right, guys, sorry about that. Uh, I had a little bit of a camera issue. It decided to cut off on me uh, right in the middle of the Tony card. But uh, yeah, we'll just go ahead and uh, try to resume from that. Uh, basically, what I was saying is, you know, um, Tony, I, I just don't think he's going to be able to really hang with a lot of guys on the top of the division anymore. You know, his age is catching up to him. And a lot of guys are just, you know, skill wise, you know, they're, they're just a few levels above Tony you know, at the moment, so, um, happy to have the Tony cards, but, um, you know, hopefully Tony can pick up another win pretty soon, and, uh, somewhat get back on track, but, uh, you know, he's gonna have a hard time against the elite of the division, especially the top five, but we will go ahead and quickly move on to the final three packs here, let's see what we get. All right, and on the third to last pack, our first card is Uriah Hall. Uriah Primetime Hall. You know, Uriah is always exciting to watch. Um, the, the biggest problem with him has always been this mental block when it comes to fighting. And, uh, you know, for a lot of years, there's been so much potential for Uriah. Uriah could have easily been a top five guy in the division, he could have possibly made it to a title shot, but he's always had this weird mental block where he just kind of stalls and fights. And, uh, you know, he's even come out in interviews and said that he doesn't like to hurt people. He really struggles with it. And I think that holds him back in his fights. But when he doesn't think those things and he just lets his skills go, Uriah Hall is one of the most dangerous guys in the UFC. You know, his spinning back kicks are, you know, phenomenal. They're dangerous. And, uh... Uriah Hall could be so good if he could just kind of get over some of his uh, mental roadblocks and fights and just let his skill show. But um, unfortunately, uh, you know, right when that seemed like that might be happening, uh, he fought Chris Weidman. Weidman horribly broke his leg in that fight, and Uriah didn't really get to show off any skills or to see if we, you know, he could kind of push those mental blocks and actually start to just take over and dominate fights. But uh, I'm very happy to have a baseline Uriah Hall. That's a great card to have, and we'll move on. All right, and behind him, we have a fearless Rose Namajunas. I love Rose. Who doesn't love Thug Rose? Um, I got one of her knockout artists or instant impact cards in my first box, and um, very happy to have that. That's a fantastic card to have, a fearless Rose. Anything with Rose is just, it's just great, and uh, we'll go ahead and see what's behind Rose. And, all right, we already got one of these in the first box. A rookie card, Giga Jakadze. One of the nastiest and deadliest up-and-coming featherweights. Uh, landed that disgusting body kick on Cub Swanson. Giga's on a roll, and now he's actually going to fight Edson Barbosa. That matchup is coming up soon, and that's going to be a phenomenal fireworks fight. So, very excited about that. And behind Giga, I have one of these as well. Another rookie card, Muslim Salikov. You know, Dagestani fighters are just a different breed. They're all tough as hell and almost impossible to beat. And uh, they're just, you know, they're completely dominant. There's just something in the water in the uh, mountains of uh, Dagestan. So, all right. We will get on to the second and last pack. Hopefully I don't have any other camera issues here. And let's see what we get in the second to last. And off the bat, we have a baseline, Derek Brunson. You know, that's a, that's a great card to have. Um, Derek Brunson, you know, always doing some uh, some interesting things in the middleweight division. You know, he, he has some ups, he has some downs. Derek, uh, his biggest downfall in his fights is that he just gets too crazy. He gets too excited. He goes nuts. He goes apeshit trying to finish a fight. And then he gets sloppy, and then he gets caught. And that's always been kind of the defining thing of his career outside of the tactical loss to Izzy. 
is that, uh, you know, when he's calm and he's collected and he's patient and he's tactical, Brunson can be a problem and he can pick up solid wins. But when he comes out, you know, going ape shit, balls to the wall, just trying to kill a guy, that's where he gets caught and then he winds up taking some of his uh, unfortunate losses. But uh, that's a great card to have. The baseline Derek Brunson, my first. And behind this, I'm seeing a rookie card here. And here we go. We got a rookie card, Bryce Mitchell, in the middle of the Twister, which uh, he is making his uh, signature submission here in the UFC. One of the rarest submissions you could see. Uh, but uh, yeah, Bryce Mitchell on a roll. On a little bit of a tear in the featherweight division, and he's definitely up and coming, and he's definitely a problem in the division. And I think a lot of guys are going to struggle with his pace, his pressure, and his ground game. Uh, you know, easily one of the uh, one of the toughest kids to uh, come into the UFC and uh, on a good little streak here. Very happy to have that rookie card. And behind him, we're going to get a green prism. Who's it going to be? Ah, Amanda Rebos. Okay, not bad for a green. Amanda Rebos, you know, a very solid fighter in her uh, her division, strawweight division, and, uh, you know, excited to have that. Or Amanda Rebos has done some good things. She's picked up some good wins. Very solid in her division. And behind her, I already got one of these, a baseline Angela Hill. All right. We will go on to the final pack. Let's hope for something big. Already very happy with this box. Got a lot of juniors, got a Masvidal, got a Usman. Very happy with the box. All right. And off the bat, in the final pack of the box, we got a Nate Diaz. And uh, there we see him lighten up Connor with that phenomenal and classic Stockton volume. Very happy to have a Nate. Who doesn't love Nate? You know, what's up, guys? My name's Nate Diaz, and uh, yeah, you just pulled my card, but I don't care. I'm going to whip Connor's ass in the trilogy, just like Justin did. Yeah, I do a little bit of a Nate uh, impression sometimes, and uh, yeah, who doesn't love Nate? That's awesome. Very happy to have his uh, his base card. And behind Nate, we have a Andrea Lee. Not bad. That is my first Andrea Lee. Very solid fighter in the flyweight division. You know, Andrea's uh, picking up some good wins. Had a lot of tough competition. A lot of good things for Andrea, you know, definitely someone to look out for. Uh, she's getting better with each fight, too. So that's that's fantastic for the Andrea card. And yes, one of my all-time fight, <coughs> excuse me, all-time favorite fighters, a knockout artist, Max Holloway. I absolutely love Max. I think he is the greatest featherweight of all time. No question. Sorry, Alexander Volkanovsky, but you're not even close. You have not beat the level of competition that Max has beat. Max is, I mean, he's one of the, probably the best striker in the UFC. His volume is insane. His accuracy is insane. What he did to Calvin Cater was absolutely ridiculous. Lit up one of the most impressive and dangerous up-and-coming strikers in the division. An absolute killer. And made him look like a rookie. And uh, what he did to Aldo, you know, beating Aldo twice, you know, how can you deny? And Max is such... A phenomenal, fun-loving guy. Great personality. I love everything about Max, and I'm very happy with this card. Greatest featherweight of all time, in my opinion. And for the final card in the pack behind Max, uh, I already got one of these. I got the baseline Johnny Walker again. The always explosive, dangerous as hell. I mean, can kill you with any one punch or shot, uh, Johnny Walker. So, uh, great card to have. All right. So that will do it for the second round of the UFC Panini Prism Blaster Boxes. I pulled some great cards, very happy with it. And uh, I will be getting that retail box in a few days in the mail. And uh, I will do a video for the full 24-pack retail box. Until then, you guys have a great day, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.